Here I have everything I think I'm going to need to build myself a motor. So I've only used this kit once before, um, but they're all quite similar, so I'm optimistic that it's going to work, but it might require a little bit of effort. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the base. Now to do that, I'm going to take two small lengths of wire, and I'm going to trim the ends off these. So with this, at one end I'm leaving a small amount of metal, at the other end I'm leaving actually quite a little, a little bit more metal. That's, that if you can see it, is what I'm going to use to make contact with part of my motor once I've built it. So I'm going to do the same one for each side and then I'm going to weave it through the, my base. And the reason why I'm weaving it through is to just hold it in place. So you can do it, you can use some little grommets and things. But I find that this works rather nicely. So I'm going to pull that over and I'm going to pull it back. I'm going to do that because I'm going to put it under some tension later. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. Weave it round to hold it in place. And then I've got part of my base. I'm going to put two, and these are called split pins. These split pins are just going to hold the center axle on which my motor is going to spin around. So that's going to go through there in a bit. I'm going to get my iron yoke. That's what this is. I'm going to insert my magnet jaw magnet. So this has got a magnetic field on one side. I don't know whether that's north or south, but I want to make sure the opposite, well, that's pushing away. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to flip it around. That's attracting. That means if that's north, then that's south. So I'm going to have a nice magnetic field going through the middle there. I'm going to place that there. And that's the base made. I can sort of just leave that there and not worry about it. Now, the second thing I need to make is I need to wrap wire all around this bit. So this bit's going to be spinning. I need a piece of wire to start with. I don't know exactly how long it's going to be. So I'm going to, uh, so I'm going to unwind a chunk of it to begin with. I'm going to place it next to this. Now this is a bit confusing. If you look at this, it looks like that's metal. It's not. That end is plastic. If it was metal, it would conduct electricity and my experiment wouldn't work. My motor wouldn't work. So I'm going to wrap it around. I'm going to, today I'm going to wrap it around, I don't know, six times or so. It can work with fewer, it can work with more. If you have more, there's a chance that it's going to get sort of caught. I'm going to wrap it around one side at a time just to hold it nicely in place. Four. Six. Of course, you can provide these for your students. You can do this pre made and with some classes. That's definitely what I would do. But with other classes, um, it's really nice if they can make it themselves. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some tape around it first. hold it together as a nice neat package. Do, 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 do. Now this and this metal is on one side, this wire is on one side. I want the other one to be about the same length. Um, to show the metal, that's about perfect. I can trim it down just the end off that. Now, this is the trickiest bit. I've been provided by my technician with some tubing. Now, this is just the perfect tubing when I used it before. So my technician's saving me once again, but sometimes it's, it can be really fiddly to find the right tubing. What I'm gonna try and do, and this is probably where I'm gonna have to pause it and do it multiple times, is I'm gonna try and get this tubing to go over both wires on both sides. So we're going to hold the wire in place with this metal tubing. 
That's not bad. That is not bad. There we go. And sometimes a perfectionist might put another piece of tubing just at the top to hold it in place, but I'm really satisfied with that. I think that's going to hold it nicely. I'm going to bring it back to my base. And this is the bit where I need to be really careful. So in fact, I'm going to start weaving the axle through in the middle. Then I'm going to pull one of those back to one side. I'm going to pull one of those back to be the other side. But not too far because I still want them under the tension. Oh no, it's pinged out. There we go. So one's one side, one's the other side. And the one on that side's not quite long enough. So I'm going to pause the video and just adjust the length of this to make it slightly higher. So I've adjusted it, but I haven't cheated, I haven't tested it yet. So I've now got one wire pushing in that way on this split ring commutator. I've got the other wire pushing in that way on the split ring commutator. So it should be being squeezed. And then using direct current for my motor, I'm going to turn it down to zero to begin with. And then we should turn it up and see whether we get anything. There we go. We have we have built an intermittently working but successfully working motor.